Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today, we're going to continue our study on accounting for overheads. Now, in our previous video, we solved the question that involves the apportionment of overheads to two different production departments. Now, in this video, we are going to extend it. There are other aspects of overheads that I want you to understand. Now, we have dealt with production departments. In this video, we are going to add service departments. They are not the same. Now, service departments are usually departments that offer services to the production departments, even though they could also offer to other service departments. And so what we are going to do is that because service departments offer services to the production department, whatever overhead that they incur, okay, also belongs to the production department. And so even though we are going to do apportionment of overheads to the production department and then also to the service department, after we are done and we find the totals, we'll have to reapportion the overhead of the service department to the production department. And that is what I'm trying to let you understand. And so we are going to look at different situations or different scenarios under the service department. For example, there could be a service department providing canteen service to the production department. Whatever canteen services they are offering is for the benefits of the production department. And therefore, whatever overhead they care in that must be borne by the production department in effect. Now, let me explain to you different situations where we can have service departments under overhead analysis. Now, so let's say the first situation is when we have only one service department providing services to the production departments. So we have only one service department, or yes, let's say one, providing services to the production department. And in that case, after we are done with the overhead analysis sheet and we have done the apportionment, we are going to do something called reapportionment. We are going to share again, reshare the total overhead of the service department to the production department according to the ratio of the way they benefit from the service department. That is the first scenario. Now, the second scenario is when you have two service departments providing services to the production departments. Now, if you have two service departments or two or more service departments providing services to the production department only, and I know what I mean by only, they are providing services, whether they are two or more. The key word here is only that the services that these service departments are providing is for the production department only. When that happens, then still the total overheads of those service departments will still be charged or reapportioned to the production department at the end. That is what we are trying to let you understand. And then there is a third scenario where you have two or more service departments and one benefits from the services of the other. So in other ways, you can have two service departments, service department A and service department B, and it may be production department X and Y. So production and service departments. Now for the production, they will always benefit from the service. And we expect that the service departments should provide services to the production department. However, if you have a situation where service department A also benefits from B, okay, then it means that it's not only the production department X and Y that is benefiting, but the service department A is also benefiting. So after we have gotten total overhead for each of them, if you want to reapportion that of B, we are not going to reapportion it only to the production department because they are not the only beneficiaries. It's also going to be shared and some will be given to the service department A as well. That is what we are trying to say. So B is providing services for X, Y, and A. A is providing services to only X, Y. So what is going to happen is that after we have shared the total overhead of B for the three of them, then we can now share that of A to X and Y. So that is just a gist, okay? And I'll make it more understandable. I know that this is very abstract. So if you are not understanding me very well, don't worry. I'm going to take practical questions for each of the scenarios. 
and then I'm going to solve. In fact, I want to take my time and let you understand these things very well. Now, after we are done with these three scenarios, then we will look at reciprocal services. What do I mean by reciprocal? Reciprocal services is where one service, uh, the two service departments benefit from each other. So in this case, whilst A is benefiting from B, B is also benefiting from A. And so we are going to do reapportionment until their balances uh, runs down to zero. And that is quite technical and complex than this trade that I'm going to talk about. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to take questions. I'm going to solve a question on this, that, and that. And when I'm done, I'll come to the reciprocal services, which I know most of you have challenges, and I'm going to take my time to talk about the repeated distribution method, the elimination method, and even the algebraic method. So I want you to follow as I take you through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a question on this now, and then we are going to solve it. We're a situation where we have only one service department providing service to the production department. Okay. All right, so let us take this question and then solve it together. Agalega Limited has three service departments made up of two production departments and one service department providing canteen service. The overheads incurred in the year 2016 are stated below. So we have wages, indirect wages. Production department one is 15,000. Production department two is 21,000. Service department is 10,000, making a total of 46,000. And then we have materials, indirect materials. Production department one is 7,500, uh, 7, sorry. Production department two is 12,000. And then service department is 8,550. Rent and rate is 9,500. So those are common expenses. Lighting is 8,000. Depreciation on equipment, 3,500. Canteen service is 5,000. Electric power is 7,500. Giving us a total of 33,000. 500 and a grand total of 107,550. Now we continue. It was decided that indirect expenses should be apportioned as follows. So we have the department production one, two, and three. Effective horsepower, the ratio is given for the three. Area occupied is the number of employees. We have 20, 30, but dash for service department, and I will explain to you why. Cost of equipment, the ratio is the number of balls and then working hours. So these are the basis of apportionment where we are going to choose from to apportion our expenses. You are required to prepare an overhead analysis sheet for the company showing the total overheads attributable to each department. Okay. So this is a very simple question. So I'm going to clean the board and then I'm going to put up the format and then we solve it together. Remember, there is a service department in here. Okay. So, we'll have the type of overhead or overhead item. The next column is for basis of apportionment. And then we'll have the department, two production departments. So, we have two production departments, and then we'll have a service department, and then the total. So, the format hasn't really changed that much. So, we have, we call it overhead, analysis sheets so type of overhead or overhead type basis of apportionment and then we have the production department in this question the production departments are one and two so production department one production department two and then we have a service department which is just one and then there will be the total so you know i'm sure by now you are very conversant with the formats 
of the overhead analysis sheet. So we can now proceed to the question and then solve it together. Okay. All right, so we are solving this question together. Now, we are told that Agar Legal Limited has three departments, made up of two production departments and one service department, providing canteen service. Now, this is why I want you to understand that. The service department is providing canteen service. I want you to take note because we'll come back to it again. All right, that is the work of the service department. So let's begin. Start from indirect wages. That one is direct allocation. They have already given us the figures. So just as we did in the previous one, indirect wages. The basis of apportionment, because it has been given, we call it direct allocation. Now, what is the figure for Department 1? That is 15,000. Department 2 is 21,000. And then giving us a total. Oh, no, the service department, sorry. Service department is 10,000. So we show that as well, giving us a total of 46,000. So you know, this is not too different from what we did in the previous video, only that we have introduced a service department. In the previous video, it was just two departments and a total. So we are building on this step by step so that you will not miss up anything or any step. Now let's, move at, let's look at the next item. It was indirect material which is also a direct allocation because it has been given to us for all the departments. So the basis of apportionment is direct allocation. Now, what is the figure for service department one? That is, hey, sorry, production, production department one is 7,500. Production department two is 12,000. So 7,512,000. So and then for the service department, indirect material cost is 8,550. So 8,550, giving us a total of 28,050. So these things are very easy, especially when it's a direct allocation. You get very easy marks up here. So you really need to get that. Now, this is where the headache is, I always said. I always say it for most students. And this is where we need to pay attention to the basis of apportionment. We have rent and rate. Rent and rate, what is the most appropriate basis of apportionment for rent and rate? Not what you know in your head. I know you know it is floor area occupied. But if you are solving a question where you have rent and rate, and from the provided basis they have given you, there is no floor area occupied, please use a new, a different one, the most appropriate. But in this question, looking at the basis of apportionment i think we have the floor area occupied so we can use that for the rent and rate okay area occupied is there in square meter 100 200 and 100 so the ratio is one is to two is to one for two production department and the service department so we have rent and uh, rates and the basis is area occupied now, the total amount is 9,500, so we can put the total there, because what they've given us is already the total. So we need to split by the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1. We can show workings elsewhere, but I've already taught you how to do this. Yes, and so we are going to have 2,375 for the production department 1. We're going to have 4,750 for production department 2. And the service department is also going to be 2,375. For those of you who are confused as to how I got this, let me show workings for you. You have the production department one. The, the ratio is 100 is to 200 is to 100. Look at it carefully from the basis of apportionment. So it's going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1. So if you want to still use the 100, then this is for production department one. This is for production department two. This is for the service. So for production department one is 100, total ratio will be 400. So 100 over 400 times this total amount, 9,005. That is going to give us 2,375. And then we use the same. For two, it will be 200 over 400 times 9,005. For service, it's going to be 100 over 400 
times two, uh, 9,005. So please, I don't want us to waste much time with the workings, okay? Try and get it so that I'll be writing the figure straight as I calculate over here. So that is the apportionment of the rent and rates for you. Then let us look at the next overhead item, which is the lighting. Lighting, the total for lighting is 8,000. Now, what is the most appropriate basis of apportionment for lighting? Let us look at the basis of apportionment. We have area occupied, we have number of employees, we have effective horsepower, we have cost of equipment, number of bulbs, and we have working hours. Which one is the most appropriate? Of course, we know that area occupied is also appropriate, but the most appropriate is the number of bulbs because lighting, we light the place by bulbs, okay? So we have number of bulbs, we have area occupied, and the most appropriate for lighting is the number of bulbs because it's a bulb that is used for lighting. If there was no number of bulbs in this question, the next most appropriate would have been the area occupied by the light. So you should understand that as well. So we are going to use the number of bulbs for the lighting expense. So lighting, number of bulbs. So we put the total and then you split it. So what is the total for lighting expense? It is 8,000. Now let's get the ratio for the number of bulbs. The ratio for the number of bulbs is 10 is to 25 is to 15. So we are going to use that. And the total ratio, 10 plus 25, okay, we have the total there as 50. So 10 over 50 times 8,000 gives you that. And then 25 over 50 in that order. Okay, just as we did for the first case. And so, for department one, we have 1,600. And for production department two, we have 4,000. And then for production department three, we have 2,400. You can punch and confirm that from your calculator. So that is how to apportion the lighting using the number of bulbs. If you use any other basis, you are going to get different figures. And that is going to be a disaster. So please take note. Now the next one is the depreciation of equipment. Depreciation of equipment, the total is 3,005. So depreciation of equipment. Which one among the basis of apportionment do you think is the most appropriate for depreciation of equipment? If you go through the basis, we have effective horsepower, area occupied in square meter, number of employees, cost of equipment, number of bulbs and working hours. Of course, it is the cost of equipment. That is the most appropriate, cost of equipment. So what is the total depreciation expenditure for equipment? It's 3,500. So we are going to split that, this amount into three using the ratio of the cost of equipment. We have 250,000 for the department one, 300,000 for department two, and 150,000 for department three. So we are going to use that, and the total ratio is 700,000. And then we are going to use the same approach to split that. And so for production department one, we'll have 1,250. For department two, we'll have 1,500. And then for department, uh, service department, we have 750. That is going to make up a total of 3,500. I know by now, your understanding is shooting up, but we are not there yet. There is still more to go. There are other levels. We are climbing gradually and step by step. Okay. Then let's look at the last but one, which is the canteen service, 5,000. Now, canteen service is 5,000. What is the most common basis of apportionment for the canteen service? Or what is the, the most suitable that we should use? I know you are very quick to look at what I have projected and say number of employees, because number of employees are eating from the canteen. Well, that would have been the most appropriate if the question had not specified the job of the service department. Go back to the introduction of the question. We are told that Agalega Limited has three departments made up of two production departments and one service department providing canteen service. So the job of the service department is to provide canteen service. So any cost on canteen will be directly allocated to the service department. So we are not going to do any apportionment here. Please take note. So canteen services cost. The basis of apportionment should be direct allocation. It should have been number of employees. 
If not for that clause I just read, it should have been number of employees and then we share. But because we have been specified, and it has been specified in the question, sorry, that it is for service, then nothing goes to the production department. All the total amount comes under the service. And the amount for canteen service is 5,000. So we put 5,000 under the service and then we put 5,000 under the total. That is what it means. I'm sure it's very understandable. Now, let's look at the last one. The last one is about electric power, 7,500. So electric power. The total amount is 7,500. Now, how are we to allocate this? Or how are we to apportion this? What is the most suitable basis of apportionment for the electric power? Of course, we can all know that it is the effective horsepower. So the basis is effective horsepower because there is no meter reading here. And we are not even told whether it's metered or no metered. So effective horsepower. Now let's look at the ratio to a portion. Effective horsepower is 40, 30, 30. So 40 is to 30 is to 30. So the total ratio is 100. So 40 over 100 times 7,005 will give us the figure for production department one, which is 3,000 Ghana cities. And then department two will be 2,250. Service department 2,250. So this is how to go by the apportionment for effective horsepower. Oh, sorry, the electric power. So then we are done with this. So we have to just find the total and then will be done. So let's find the totals. The totals will be 30,725 for department one. Department two's total is 45,500. And then the service department's total is 31,325. And then the grand total is 107,500. And 50. So this is where I'm going to show you how to reapportion the service department cost. Now, please take note of something. We have already said that the service department is providing canteen services for the production department. And so this cost is what we are going to share again for them. We call it reapportionment. So we are going to reapportion the service department cost to the two production departments. Okay, so I will say reapportionment of service department cost. And then we are going to share this for these two. Please take note. But what is the most common basis of apportionment for sharing this? Because the service department is providing canteen services, then everything here is about canteen. So the most suitable basis for doing the reapportionment is the number of employees. Sometimes they will give you a percentage, but that will come as we move on. So we are going to use the number of employees to do the reapportionment. So what is it? And let me show you something. Let's go to the basis of apportionment. You see that under the number of employees, production department is 20, uh, department one is 20, department two is 30. But there is nothing for service department. So it means that that particular ratio has nothing for the service department, and that is the most appropriate. And so we, it's 20 is to 30. And so 20 over 50 times 31,325 will be given to the production department. In other words, we are sharing this back to them. Okay, so that is going to give us 12,530 for production department one. And production department two will be 18,000. 795 so that at this place we we'll put the same figure in brackets 325 in brackets and then please take note that reapportionment does not affect the totals because you are just robbing peter to pay paul it's so the total overhead that is incurred in the company we are not adding anything we are only sharing what the service has incurred back to the production department because the service departments are not supposed to end up eventually with overheads. Whatever overhead we apportion for them will be reapportioned. 
And that is what we are trying to say. Okay, so now that we have this, we can now find the grand total and then we'll be done with this. This is all it's all about. So the grand total is that we add this to add that, this becomes zero and the total, grand total remains the same. So we have 43,225. 43, and then the total for this will become 64,295. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is how to go by the reapportionment of service department, where there is only one service department rendering service for the production departments. And so this brings us to the end of part three of our video on accounting for overheads. In a part four, we are going to look at the double, what do we call it, two different service departments, and then we'll look at how to do the apportionment for two. And then we're also going to take a question where there is reciprocal services, or one benefiting from the other, and then later both benefiting from each other. And that is what I know most of you are waiting for. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it is your first time. Share this video and let others also have a benefit. And until we meet again for the part four, it's bye for now.